Zapier is one of the best tools that you can use for your team to scale your sales velocity while closing more deals in close.com. I'm going to share with you the top five zaps that you should give your sales team so they can focus more on closing deals. Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin and I'm with the Close Doctor team. If you're new to the channel, we help businesses with high ticket offers scale to seven and eight figures using our systems-based selling strategies. Diving into Zapier, this is where I'm gonna show you the five top close.com zaps that everybody should build. Once you get access to Zapier and you create your first zap, you will be presented with a blank canvas. In the canvas, you'll see the standard trigger and the standard action. Now, there are two ways to create zaps in Zapier. The first one is what you see on the screen, which is selecting the trigger and choosing the app of choice. Alternatively, my favorite method is actually leveraging Copilot on the bottom left-hand corner here. Zapier Copilot is Zapier's GPT. It will allow you to prompt the actual steps and conditions you want for a zap to be built, and Zapier will give you a high-level outline of how they be interpreted and believe it should be structured. So let me show you how it would work. So for this zap, what I'm going to do is actually going to rename it to be the new booked call. This new book calls app means that whenever we get a new booked call from our calendar link, it will create the lead in close or find them and create the custom activity and actually send us a notification in Slack. Building it out using Copilot, I would simply say new calendar booking. Second step would be find close.com lead. The third step would be create custom activity. And the fourth step is send Slack communication. Using simple English and hitting enter, Zapier will do its magic and actually give us a high level outline to build this app. And as you see here, those are the four steps and I can simply select replace all steps and Zapier will automatically import it in for us, saving us the time to find, configure each single step. Going into the first step is Calendly. So I'm gonna change it to my account. So I'm gonna just quickly connect it and that should have connected. Let's try that one more time. There it is. So now that I have my account connected, I'm going to use a trigger as myself. Now I'm going to do a test. We see that I pulled in the invite that I've just made for this test. Now I'm going to move forward and actually now configure the second step, which is connecting my close account, in this case, our demo account, and then move on to the action. Now, when it comes to finding a lead and close, you can do email, phone number, ID, if you already know it, or name matching. My number one recommendation is to use the email that is pulled and referenced in the invite as the search function. The reason why is because the email is the most unique and very likely that you'll ever experience someone has the same email across two different organizations. Now, for good measure, if that lead does not exist in the closed system, I'm also going to prompt this step to create that lead. So such as first, I'm going to find the first name or the full name, my direct email or invitees email to any other details that you would have in regards to your booking event. So if you ask for company name or you ask for specific details, this is where you would fill in those variables in close. From there, I am simply going to hit continue and I am going to make a test step. What I'm looking for here is that green check mark right where the circle is spinning. A green means it's worked and everything is right. Anything else means there's an error that most likely means something was done wrong. Moving to the third step is now creating the custom activity. Custom activities in close are pretty much what you've custom set in your close account to pretty much capture unique activities that's not available in the default setting of close. With Close Doctor, when you work with us, we'll actually help you create those custom activities and configure them. So in this case, now when it comes to finding the actions, you want to hit custom. You want to do custom because you're going to reference the lead that you just created or found in the second step. And what this does is that as new new leads come in through the booking calendar, it will dynamically change according to the lead information. Since this is going to be a book call, we're losing our internal process of the triage call booked. And just we're going to quickly define all the required variables. You'll see here anything with an asterisk means it's a required field. So until that field has a known value, it will not allow you to continue. So if you ever find out that your button is grayed out similar to this, it means that there's a missing required field that you need to complete. And finally, I just want to mark down when this call was booked for scheduled event start time. Continue. I'll test this step. And again, I'm looking for that green circle to highlight the changes. And once I do a quick pass to make sure everything is right, I'll just hit continue again and do the fourth step, which is sending a channel message in Slack. 
Here, I'm going to choose my main primary connection to Slack. If you realize that you do not have connection, this is where you might need to loop in your superior saying, hey, I need access to Slack, or can you give me the credentials? Because in order to make edits to Slack, you must have the proper credential. From there, I'm going to say this is going to go directly to me. This is going to go to our general Slack message. If there's specific formatting you want, Zapier helpfully links the document in relation to Slack and how you would actually format that data. In this case, I'm just going to keep it simple. Congrats Congrats, a new booking call has been made. A nice little celebration emoji. Give it a nice little nickname. And from there, I am good to go. I'm not going to actually publish this or test it. I'm just going to put it as a test or skip the test. Overall, this is how you would build a Zap that's referencing Calendly to your closed account, then to Slack to inform you when new bookings have been captured or scheduled on your calendar invite. To finalize it off, I would actually name this new booking automation. Zapro automatically save anything that you've made edits or revisions to automatically in the draft mode. From there, you just publish, the publishing kind of loading bar appears and you'll get a little success indicating that it has now been published. Now for the second automation, create a new activity when a new activity occurs within an external source. May it be a new payment, maybe it be a new document that has been signed, whatever it may be. We're now going to capture all those variables or those events and push it into close and actually create a custom activity to notify everybody on the lead we have a new activity. So starting with again, you can either choose trigger or action for me. I'm going to do copilot again. This this time, I'm going to say when we get a new survey form completed, we're going to create a custom activity in close. New fill out form completed, find close.com lead, create custom activity, send Slack message. Zapier is doing its magic again. Here, we're going to add in all steps. And we're now just going to configure all the steps to make sure everything is right. We're going to sign in. Now, I am just making sure I have a bunch of triggers, testing, and we're just going to pull in some raw data. So we can use for testing. Again, we're going to do a find, lead, and close. And again, we're going to use the email if it exists. Now, in this case, in the fill forms, we didn't capture email. So we can use the next best thing, which in this case is the client name or the company name. We're going to then create the lead if it does not exist and just quickly define all the variables. Testing this step to make sure everything works as intended. And there it is, the data out with all the raw data. Moving forward, we're going to create another custom activity against this new submission. So we again have everything centralized in close.com to give us a holistic image of what's going on. Now we're defining the custom activity in close. When it comes to custom activity, you need to reference the lead that was just again determined. So using the custom variables, we're going to reference the lead ID from the second step, find lead and close. There we're just defining what activity occurred. So in this case, we are doing a new submission fill out form, which is by definition a new activity. Now with custom activities in close, you have the option of having custom activity types, which have to be configured in close.com itself under the settings. If you want a video on how to actually do that, just put a comment down below or let us know and we'll actually show you guys how to do so. So in this case, I'm going to leave the activity type out, but I'm going to make sure the status is published so it actually appears correctly in the closed record. Here, I'm again defining the time of when this was created. So I'm going to reference submission date time. And from here, I'm just going to hit continue, test, and there have it. The data is now out in close.com with this confirmation of the green check mark. And finally, since this is our, let's say, NPS or survey score, we also want to push it into Slack to keep our team accountable and actually up to date of what's going on. Now, in this case, I'm going to put in some raw data from the actual submission so we don't have to jump back into fill out or close all the time, but simply just look at the raw data in Slack itself. So let's say pulling that data and the details. Now, the details are what you're seeing right now is the information is not of NPS survey, but this is to show you how you pull data in to Slack under the message using fill out or any type form style and a form builder. And we're going to hit continue. I'm going to skip that test. And there we have it, the green check mark, and which then the final step is to rename this. So NPS survey completed, send Slack and update close. Clear, concise, and consistent to how someone can understand on a high level how these apps work. So that is the second zap that I highly recommend every business builds out as a way to make sure that your team is doing well, but also has a nice feedback loop on what's working and not with your clients. The third zap I'm going to show you guys is that when you guys get a new form submission, maybe a contact us or a call to action on a newsletter, we're going to enroll them in a close.com workflow automatically from the moment they've submitted that form. In this zap, I'm going to show you how to automatically enroll contacts from your form submissions into a close.com workflow. So using Copilot again, I'm going to say when a new fill out form has been completed, we're going to find the contact in close.com, find the lead and enroll in a close.com workflow and enter. 
So in this case, we see that the form response did not reference fill out correctly, but everything else was correct. So this is where then you just use Copilot to make that adjustment. And there you have it, the updated version, which I'm going to quickly import over. So I'm now looking for a form and there's the contact us form. Going to test the trigger and let's try this again here. And there we have it, my Marcus Aurelius test. We're gonna continue. And again, we're gonna find the contact, making sure we have the right account set up. And here we're now gonna find the contact again using the individuals. In this case, we're gonna use their email, their first name, last name. Now that we selected the form, we're now gonna test and we're gonna pull the most recent submission as our test record, Marcus Dini. Here, now looking for the actual lead using their email address as the anchor point to finding the correct lead. Now, before I do the test, again, we wanna make sure we have a close, create a closed lead if they do not exist. Pulling in all the relevant data into the variable fields to make sure we get their information right. First name is Marcus, space, last name, Denis. Paste in their direct email and double check that all the other fields from the form has a spot or is relevant for this record to be created. In this case, not. So we're gonna go test a step and wait for that green check box. There it is, we're gonna continue. Now that we've created the lead, we're now going to change this event, which was improperly labeled, to subscribe to a workflow. So here you see the event subscribe conduct to a workflow. As long as the workflow is built and closed before this step, you will be able to build this successfully. Here, we'll go to account, actions, and we're now gonna look for the contact that was just created. And in this case, we're gonna do contact ID. The difference between a lead ID and a contact ID is when it's being referenced for specific functions in close. So the best way to know is look for the required field and does it say lead or contact? That's when you know to either look for the contact or ID or the lead ID. Next, you're now looking for the workflow. In this case, I've created one called drip campaign. And then from there on, you just hit continue and hit test and wait for that green checkbox, which is there. And finally, again, just rename this to something appropriate. Contact us form email drip campaign. And once that's done, you can hit publish or go through the review process with your team. In the fourth zap I'm gonna show you guys is we're now gonna actually have Zapier look and capture our Stripe payment details and actually update the contact details in close so we know when a new deal has been closed and we've collected the payments. So first things first is make sure you have a Stripe account. Now in this test, I'm gonna be using test data from Stripe so we are able to make sure everything's working without needing to actually process transactions. In Zapier, I'm now gonna manually look for Stripe and when I see a new payment, I'm gonna connect the new account and I'm gonna get the test ID. So after you've defined the event in Stripe, which is a new payment, you're gonna choose the account in question and you're gonna test your trigger. From there, once you get the payment intent or the proper test record, you move forward and you define your next action. In this case, we're gonna again do close.com and we're gonna find that lead. We're going to sit find lead ID, choose the account, in this case, the demo account and hit continue. Now we're gonna reference the email of the individual to look and find for the contact. As a safe precaution, I also add in the create a closed lead because for some reason, if the email is different or the, a special event occurs where there might be a possibility of the Stripe payment not matching to an existing lead, we want to create it. So we at least capture that data in close and handle it in reconciliation in close later on. So again, we're gonna do put all the variables, hit continue and test the step. And this is how you create the simple automation of capturing your Stripe payments and actually adding it to close to an existing lead. So everything is in one, again, one central location. And finally, I'm just gonna rename this and save that. In this fifth zap, I'm gonna show you how to use close.com opportunity events to create PandaDoc agreements. So the idea here is when a new close.com opportunity has been marked either as send proposal, create proposal, anything of that nomenclature, we're gonna use that event to create the PandaDocs event, to create the PandaDoc itself and send it to your clients. So the trigger in this case would be close.com and a update or opportunity is in a specific status. Now, in this case, we're gonna say the new status type is one and the old status is active. From here, we're gonna test the trigger and in the event where there's no data that is there, we're just gonna skip the test and close will give us a bunch of sample data. The next step is to look for PandaDocs and we're gonna create a document. We're gonna call this document, we'll just say the lead name dash individual's name. The template in this case is going to be a hard-coded version. So in this case, we have closed document proposal set up in our PandaDocs. That's the one we're referencing. We wanna make sure it says send document is yes. So automatically when the step triggers, it creates and sends it to the individual. In this case, I'm just gonna use my email. In most cases, you would just put the email address of the client, which is pulled in from the opportunity record. And I'm just gonna just put in my name and just say close doctor. 
Now, the fun part is actually defining the products. In this case, I'm going to do a simple hard-coded product, which is consulting. From the consulting, we can add a brief description. And from there on, we're going to put the value of the contract of the opportunity into the price with a quantity of one with no discount. Now, what I love to do is that where you see document metadata, this is where I would actually encode the opportunity ID. So when Panadoc creates it, it stores the opportunity ID. So when it's signed and you push that details over into close again, that detail or that opportunity ID is already there. And I'm just going to call this opportunity underscore ID test. And there we have it. We get confirmation the document is sent, the document name, but also the individual's email that's going to be receiving. In this case, instead of my email, it would say your client's email and their first name and last name. Finally, naming this would be send opportunity to client via Panda Docs. But that's how you would create those top five CRMs in Zapier that I would recommend every business implements with closed.com.